So I want to start off with just what is happening right now. There are a number of closed door meetings. We're hearing from our sources that uh, the vast majority of Republicans in the House, and 200 of them, uh, have been trying, mostly McCarthy allies, to convince this group of sort of 19, 20 Republicans that were not voting for him uh, to have a change of heart and, and change of vote. Right now, we're joined by Congresswoman Lisa McClain, one of the Republicans that voted for Kevin McCarthy. Congresswoman, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks for being here. So I, I want to ask you just first if you think we have another round of voting coming up. Uh, is Leader McCarthy going to gain support, potentially going to lose support, or is there going to be no change from yesterday? What's your read on it? Well, I think he's going to gain support. That's my hope anyways. I know over uh, last evening and in, even this morning as we speak, he's meeting with members to try and get them to a yes. And I know this group of never Kevin Republicans have made some demands. Uh, we've seen some concessions. I know a lot of the people who support Kevin McCarthy say those demands are not reasonable and that they keep moving the goalpost. In other words, they'll make demands, they'll get concessions, and then make even more demands. Uh, do you agree with that read on uh, these members? I do. And at the, en at the end of the day, what is the goal? So what do we need to do, or what does Kevin need to do to get them to a yes? And that's been the frustrating part, is they have moved the goalpost. So tell me what you need to get to a yes, because at the end of the day, the American people want us to govern. Listen, we are ready to put a bill on the floor the moment we, we elect a speaker, to defund the 87,000 IRS agents. We are ready to get to work. The American people are ready to get to work. And at the end of the day, Kevin won by almost 85%. So in essence, he's won the primary. We've got to get behind our primary candidate, not give away the farm so we can get back to work and start governing. I mean, so you stand to be in, in leadership in, in this Congress here. I'm just wondering, what is the path? forward. I mean, how do you convince these people who say, I will never vote for Kevin McCarthy? Uh, what can he dangle before them to try to get him to get them on board? Well, what I would do is I would flip the narrative. If not Kevin, then who? And they've thrown up Jim Jordan, who is a dear friend of mine, a mentor. I respect Jim um, like no other member of Congress, and he will make a phenomenal member or chair of the Judiciary Committee. The issue is that's who they've thrown up. He doesn't even want to be speaker. He's supporting Kevin McCarthy. So come on, let's get behind the person who's won the primary and let's get to work for the American people. They've gotten a lot of, of concessions and they've negotiated a really good rules package, which we would have never gotten to. And I give them credit had we not had this spirited debate, but it's time to get to work. Do you think uh, former President Donald Trump's endorsement, which came just this morning on True Social for Kevin McCarthy, makes a difference at all? Does that move the needle when we see the first round of votes? Well, supposedly the, the 20 members are you know, loyal Trump supporters, so I would hope that it makes a difference for those people. But again, we'll see when we get on the floor. We have been talking all morning about how there are real world consequences to not having a House sworn in, right? None of the committees can do their work. We've been talking about, you know, veterans issues, the military, about health and the economy, all of these things crucial to American life. Uh, you know, Congress has a hand in and committees have a hand in, but they can't get that work done unless you get through this. Can you just speak to that? I, I imagine that's the most real way that this impacts people watching at home. Well, you're exactly right. We have to seat the Speaker of the House before members of Congress can even get sworn in, before we can put people on committee assignments and, and elect chair people um, of these committees. So we are at a real stalemate right now with not electing a Speaker of the House. That's just the facts and that's just where we're at. I've heard a lot of people, Republicans, talk about this being an embarrassment to the party. You have some that say, no, this is a healthy process and this is how we get the best candidate for speaker. Uh, which is it? Well, I think somewhere in the, in the middle lies the truth, is we've complained for the past two years that Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats have a dictatorial way of leading, and they do. I mean, we've seen it time and time again. There's been no debate, there's no, been, uh, no healthy debate in committee. The rules or the legislation goes right from Pelosi's desk to the committees who she says, no debate, just get it on the floor. 
Well, now we're having, we're seeing some debate, which I do think is healthy. It gets us to a better spot. Now what we're, we're talking about is how long does this debate go? And we need to make sure that the debate doesn't cripple us, which I don't think we're at that point yet. But again, if it goes much longer, then we're, I think we're going to get into some really interesting territory. Congresswoman Lisa McLean from the great state of Michigan. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.